Al-Nasif, Ashraf, Japs, sorry, Mao, and Rasi. Our guests, can you please stand up? Please stand up. I would like to add my words to the president and welcome you to Toastmasters Club. And I would like to congratulate you for this brave move of starting the journey of Toastmasters as a first step as guests. And I do hope that you'll join us. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a hand up. And you can really sit down. Now, Toastmasters, if you remember, that's how we all started as Toastmasters. We were guests. We were invited by our friends. And we came to the first session like they did. And we enjoyed the session. We enjoyed the speeches. We had fun. And there was cream on top. Because we got a break and snacks and refreshments. And we came back for the second session to enjoy. But guess what? Boom! Suddenly, there's a bump in your lap. You see, your friend who invited you didn't tell you that there is a trap, that there is a bump, which is called table topics. Suddenly, you hear your name by the table topic master. Can we invite Mel, please, to come to the stage? <laughs> Suddenly, you hear your heart running faster among the applause of the patients. And you come with a smile and grin. Show me confidence, but deep inside, you really wish never accepted the invitation. <laughs> now, we have, we have all gone through this stage. And we come here, we deliver that speech for one minute or 30 seconds, and we can't wait to rush to our comfort zone, back to our seats. Till the table topic evaluator comes and says, Mel, you deliver a great speech. You really have great potentials. And we wish that you could have spoken for a little bit longer so that we can enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, that comment and that butterfly in your stomach for the first time is the first step which gets you to the championship beyond the borders of our club. And we have some who are in this room, Ricky, Mel, Jeffrey who is not here, and many who have followed this. Now, with me, it wasn't the same. I guess I was lucky. I was not invited by a friend, and I didn't have a butterfly in my stomach. Because in 2014, a friend of mine, DTM, Sheikh uh, Shakir Anjou, some of you might know him, approached me and he said, do you like to join Toastmasters? So I didn't know about Toastmasters, and I asked him, what is Toastmasters? Oh, well, he said to me, this is where leaders are made. <laughs> so I grinned and I laughed. And I said, thanks. Nobody's going to teach me how to suck eggs. I've been a leader for 40 years. Thank you very much. <laughs> but he persisted for months. And when he convinced me that this is good for the employees of the hospital, then as a team player, I thought about it. And in March 2015, we created MDH Club. Now, I thought, and I was a little bit cocky, you know, because I didn't have butterfly, you know, I, I, I had to do him a favor. So I was cocky and a little bit arrogant. But butterfly somehow found its way to my stomach <coughs> to put a dumper on my cockiness when I've been asked to do an icebreaker. So I said, what is an icebreaker? Well, they say, this is where you introduce yourself, you talk about your childhood, you talk about, I said, hang on, hang on, just a minute. No way. The relationship between me and employees is professional, it's not social. I'm not gonna tell the only thing which they hear from me, well done, or you're fired. So, but ladies and gentlemen, I was right. When I delivered my icebreaker, I could see the grin and the smiles on the faces of the nurses who are looking at me. And I could hear what they're not saying. Oh, good. After all, it's not that tough. It's not tough spots. I couldn't wait to go back to my seat and reestablish my authority. By the way, I spoke for three minutes and I was disqualified. 
But on my second speech, I was a little bit more relaxed. And I had one of the nurses who actually supposed to evaluate me. So I saw how when she was going to this stage, she was nervous and she was not relaxed. So I thought, I'm gonna help her. I would like to really relax her. So I looked at her and I gave her that look. Don't you dare. And trust me, she did an awesome evaluation. She evaluated me like if I was a champion. <laughs> now, a few months have passed by, and what Toastmaster did, it broke that ice between management and employees, and it became like a family. And each one started developing his own skills, which he was looking after. And within a year from joining, I reached the district level in public speaking, and within three years, I became a division director and a DTM, and now I'm a member of six clubs, finished my first part, and I've got seven mentees. And I thought after all this time, there is no way that butterfly will find its way to my stomach. DTM, confident. But I was wrong. When they advised me to engage in humor, I said, hang on, just a minute. Inspirational speaker, motivational speaker, fine. Comedian, forget it, no way. I felt the brother, ah, yeah, it's not me, you are. But I thought about it and I said to myself, well, isn't Toastmaster about developing new skills? So what's wrong? Take the first step, try humor. And I did, and I'm glad I did not regret it. First, I started by hiding behind props. I used to hide behind Siku Siku and use him and tell jokes till I gained confidence. And then I started giving anecdotes about self-deprecating, talking about myself, stories from my ground. And I'm gonna share with you two anecdotes which I have used in my speeches. In 1974, uh, the government sent me to the UK to graduate in hotel management. Now, back home, we all my studies were in French. We do two hours a week in English, so my English wasn't that good. I landed in this guest house where you have to sit and breakfast, uh, dinner, and the government pays for it. And the landlady came in the first morning and she brought me this lovely plate of breakfast. Now, back home, our breakfast is French, croissant and coffee. I looked at the plate and I reacted immediately. And I said to her, Mais dis donc, c'est quoi ça, merde alors? She looked at me, she said, English, please. So in my break, broken English, and in a French accent, I said, what this? Poor lady, she thought I wanted to actually learn English. She, she started explaining. Uh, these are eggs, sausages, bacon, and hashed potato. I said, me know that. Bacon from pork? She said, that's good, you got it, bacon is from pork. So I pushed the person, take, me eat no pork. You should have seen her face. Right. She put her hands around her hips and she said to me, listen to me, sunny boy, you don't eat bacon, that's fine. But in this country, we say please and thank you. So I pushed the plate again, I said, please, thank you, now take. <laughs> Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? One month later, I was shouting at her, uh, Mrs. Lemkin, may I have an extra portion of pork bacon, please? And dogs. Don't get me wrong, I don't eat dogs. But that's my second anecdote. In the day, dogs in our countries, they're either in the street or in the garden, if they're lucky. But with Mr. and Mrs. Lepkin, dogs were in the lounge. So one day they invited me for tea. So I went down, and we were, as we were sitting having tea, watching the news, Mrs. the dog came near Mrs. Lepkin, and she's my landlady, and he was begging for tea. <laughs> So she put something in the saucer and she gave it to him and she said, oh, bless his soul, he wants his cup of tea. And when I was looking at that in disgust, while the dog was slurping the tea and dribbling, I couldn't take it. Then suddenly the dog came next to me. I said, no way. So I pushed him with a little bit of my leg and said, sure, go away. She looked at me with anger and she said, sunny boy, please. So I said, okay. I pushed him again. Shiva, go away, please. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? A month later, I was pouring the tea in my saucer, 
and giving to the dog. He said, Nigel, bless his soul, his cup of tea. And that's what you call adjusting to English culture if you're in a different country. So, ladies and gentlemen, and fellow Toastmasters, and particularly the Toastmaster PNS, reflecting on my pathway, it has taught me something. That first of all, you should never undermine yourself. There's always, you should know, there's always something hidden in you. All you have to do is dig in and look for it. And get it at all, and lynch it. And that's what I did with the human. It helped me to become fun. And when I come to Toastmasters or any events, I am fun. And my relationship with the staff and my wife was more relaxed. So, I advise the PNS Toastmasters in particular, if you have not engaged in pathway, do not procrastinate. Do it now. It is a very enjoyable journey. And take the engage the humor pathway. It is challenging, but it is also at the same time rewarding. As to you guests, I advise you to take the brave step, come to this stage, and unleash that potential. Because, as I said, table topic is not a bomb and it's not a booby trap. What it is, it's an opportunity for you to show what you have. The first step might be difficult, but trust me, it will be beneficial. Do not remain as ducks who are in the water, all they do is quack, quack. Join the eagles of this club and you will become an eagle yourself who can fly high in the sky and niche your potential which is hidden deep inside you and awaken the giant within. Back to you, duck of the day. Uh, sorry, back to you, <laughs> eagle of the day. Uh, thank you.